Fucking Fun with Edo Podcast. Hello everyone. It's Edo Four, and I'm back with a seventh episode of the podcast Talking Fun with Edo. Welcome to Edo Coco's second channel, or if you've been here before, then welcome back. On today's episode, our special guest is Noel's Comets. So here it is for the interview. But before we get to that, I have, have a new setup of lights, as you can see up top of the video right here. So now let's get started with the interview. Also, before we start this interview, I'm going to play this little sound light. Ah. Uh, this sound right here that goes, that's the warning sound. The reason why I'm gonna have a warning sound because this is a conversation that we're having that's a bit risque and like use of language as well. So just like a fair reminder and warning for all, if anything happens, here's the warning sound that I will also have from now on if there's any type of conversation that I have with for this and future guests that I can't really filter out or anything like that. Here it is. And now let's kick into the interview. Hello, everybody. Uh, now we're on the second interview with uh, my guest here, Noel Comics. I first met you two years ago when uh, you uploaded a Korean music video from uh a station that's called the International Channel. And I commented, like, where was it from? And you replied back, Music Video Heaven, which is, like, the Korean version of The Box. Have you seen uh, the channel that's called The Box? I have not seen the channel that's called The Box. What is it? I'll, I, uh, I'll tell you, and I'll be, like, sending you, like, a lot of stuff. So The Box is basically, like, this was a program that started from, like, two... Uh, 1992 to 2002 where basically yeah. you can call in and it was like it was i think it was like a public access channel but you could call in and you could request that's the best stuff. <laughs> huh that's the best kind of stuff those cool public access yeah <laughs> so um you could call in and then you could request like you could request a video of any type or even your own video and yeah. it was like from Canada, but it just came like everywhere. Like it had like, like it had every genre too. Like That's I wouldn't awesome. even be surprised if it, I don't know if it did international requests, but I want to believe it has. But I remember that was like my first musical channel before MTV, BT, and a whole lot of other things. So that's yeah. how, that's how, like, that's what it reminded me of. It's up this time, like music video heaven, it had a host and it's like, well, yep. this didn't really have a host. It had a lot of commercials of themselves, but it did, like, promise to show, like, any music video that you requested, or you can actually, like, request your own made music video on there, cool. and it was, like, nationwide, too. So, yeah. also, along this, you have, like, 1.112K subscribers. So, like, how you feeling today, man? How you feeling on this beautiful Saturday? Well, it's uh, it's not so beautiful here in upstate New York. I mean, it's pretty pretty fall leaves, but it's been raining literally since seven o'clock this morning. So, I mean, I guess if you think like it, like the movie Blade Runner mm. crossed with upstate apple picking is beautiful, <laughs> which I guess it is. So it's been really good so far. Actually, it's it's actually a quite nice out combining the constant rain of Blade Runner with wonderful fall fo uh, foliage. I don't want to do, pronounce it how Marge Simpson does foliage. Um, so, but yeah, no, it's great. I mean, I feel great. Um, you know, uh, I've got uh, two cute little kids. Um, I've been, I actually just did a fan art video that I'm going to upload to YouTube um, of the, um, so in America, I guess the cartoon would have come out in the 1970s. It was a Batman cartoon. Mm. Um, and then in the 80s, when Batman got more popular, they broadcast it in Japan and uh, I think the artist's name was like Creamy Sue or something along those lines. Uh, and so I got the Japanese closing credits to 
um, that American Batman cartoon did my own fan art to it. So I literally just finished that uh, wow. this morning. So I'm going to upload that a little later. So I have to do those like fan art videos across with like obscure music that I like. And um, yeah, and I've just been playing some JoJo's Bizarre Adventure on the PlayStation 3 and watching Pluto TV and hanging out with my kids. And it's great. Sweet. It's so funny because half of the questions it was like I was about to ask you about like we'll go over it for time. So sure. so um where where are you from? Like I know like but it's like uh where are you from and like what uh year you were like born in? Sure. Uh well I was born in nineteen eighty two. Mm. So I consider myself a child of the eighties, uh even though um, the 80s were, you know, very, you know, I, I cling to whatever memories I have of the 80s. It's not like right. in the 90s where everything is kind of more fresh and crisp. <laughs> um, and I am from uh, upstate New York. I'm actually right below Syracuse, New York. If you know, like the Syracuse Orange Men and all that stuff, big college basketball team hmm. I'm from a town uh, called Portland. Uh, which I was talking about JoJo's Bizarre Adventure is the hometown of Ronnie James Dio. So we legit have a street in town, no joke, called Dio Way. Wow. And, uh, yeah, it's great. So Cortland's a really cool little city. It's got a lot of, a, a, you know, I'm Italian-American, so it's got a nice Italian neighborhood, some Italian restaurants. Um, and uh, it's got a cool boxing gym, a cool local comic shop that you see me do some drawing videos on on my channel. And it's uh, it's a cool little city. The New York Jets used to train here too. So the last mm. time they were any remote form of decent, they used to train in Portland. So you're cool. welcome for that, Jets fans. Wow. <laughs> um, so now, uh, when did you get started on YouTube, and what was like the video that you made that like got like pretty much like kind of like went like viral for you? Yeah. Um, you know, I actually, it's funny that you mentioned International Channel because mm. um, I was a huge fan of the International Channel because the International Channel showed stuff from Japan right. um, unfiltered. So, like, you know, people are, you probably remember, like, Toonami and the Cartoon Network, which I really like a lot, but it was like, yeah, right on, brother. All right? It was like, it, the stuff was heavily edited. And yeah. so, like, as this, like, angry, you know, 10th grader, I'm like, this is bullshit man i want to see the opening credits to dragon ball none of this like, you know like you know so i then i we got international channel and they had like all the japanese opening right. credits and hey 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 music champ and, and, Korea, and all yeah. this stuff yeah korean music video heaven and all this kind of stuff so um well the reason i'm mentioning this is because international channel sadly got taken off on my cable package mm. and so i was like really forlorn i was like not happy about it and i knew this japanese girl at college and i was like oh yumiko it's like terrible it got rid of international channel she's like well have you heard of youtube and this was like in 2000 and like six you know oh, yeah. and yeah yeah that's so when i, I like, found it the next year well yeah so, yeah yeah, and I was like, "What's that? What you you too be you know? yeah. like, Not the so. band, yeah, not the band though. Has anybody yeah, like honestly I, like so. got it confused with that? Honestly, they would mix it up. They would yeah. mix it up. Yeah. Wow. Um. That. Oh my God. This is <laughs> yeah. you're, you're almost like hand, answering like all the questions here. Um. Uh. But that's okay. Uh. So <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Okay. So for uh, international channel um do you know like the whole history of like when you like first receive it and and was the international channel like nationwide too was it like in other states as well mm -hmm. yep yeah yeah it was um it was centered on the west coast because that's where they had the most asian immigrants so everything tended to be on west coast time mm. so like i remember like they'd show armored trooper Botoms and the irresponsible Captain Tyler at like one o'clock on the East Coast, one AM because mm. on the West Coast that would be at a reasonable time for people. Um International Channel, I got it through Time Warner Cable because mm. that's what we had here in Portland. We only end up with we have like one cable provider here, so it kind of sucks because mm. you're kind of at the mercy of the of the monopoly. Right. But um we got International Channel in nineteen ninety nine. Mm. And I remember it was really funny because, okay, so I went to an uh, evangelical Christian high school, right? And I have nothing but good things to say about that school. I love it. Cortland Christian Academy. Shout out to Cortland Christian Academy. Great place. 
the reason I bring that up is because my mom was like very overprotective and like didn't want me to watch Dawson's Creek, which was you know, like the, the like teen <laughs> soap opera kind of thing. It's like I want to watch Dawson's Creek, and so and then like but like in 1999 right. we got two channels. We got the WB with Dawson's Creek and International Channel, and I'm Italian and my mom's Italian, and she's like, oh, we got International Channel. I can watch shows from Italy. And I'm like, oh, that's whatever. I can finally get to sneak Dawson's Creek. <laughs> so, um, but anyway, like, I ended up like, I ended up watching the International Channel, and she did it because, like, once I found all that cool Japanese and Korean stuff, I was just like, Sad. I was all in, and that really started my love of J-pop is um, just watching the raw opening of, of Dragon Ball Z. Um, so yeah, 1999, and mm. I had that channel until 2005, and what? And I never missed the Dragon Ball. Um, and I was so pissed off because I remember it was like Super Bowl Sunday, 2005. They were going to mm. show like the last episode of Dragon Ball GT. Right. And I turned on International Channel and the, sh the channel was, was gone. gone. And I was so pissed off, man. It was like horrible. <sighs> wow. That. Yeah. So 1999 to. Was, 2005. So, so do you know, like, did is that when like International Channel official, like in the 90s or was it there, you know, beforehand? Like that's. It was, part. It was a, I don't remember the, the, the total years. It definitely existed before 99 because okay. I'm friends with a with someone on YouTube. Like we're uh, so I actually do live international channel, channel for life. Is, is that is that the international guy? International channel for life. Yes, yes. Um, you are more than welcome to, and any viewer is more welcome to stop by my live streams or anything like that. Um, but international channel for life, we ended up being friends because of our mutual love with the international channel. And he has uploaded videos, um, through like internet archive and things like that, that are at least from like 1997. So right. I think it probably started in 97 and ran till about, uh, probably Two, 2008, 25. I think. Oh, I okay. remember when it started. To that's about, there. yeah, that's about right. Yeah. Um, man. It's so because the thing it's so funny because like the first time I've pretty much found like the Asian culture it was it mm -hmm. was like this so w we're getting to it like I'm it's like you're already like we're already just like into it. but that's a good thing that's a good thing we're just yeah, getting whatever, right. so the first time I've like pretty much found something like this was like uh, on Cartoon Network when uh, do you remember the Cartoon Mysteries uh, DVD CD ROM things. It's based, it was from super familiar. It, it was in the cereals. It was in the cereal box from Kellogg's, and it's like as soon yeah. as you. And so the first thing I found, I was like watching the special features of it, and it showed uh, Shonen Knife, and the they did the soundtrack for Powerpuff Girls, and nice. I didn't. And then at that, that this was in was in two thousand four. At the same time, I found Puffy, which is Puffy Yami Yumi. Puffy Yami Yumi, yeah. But it's like. The thing I didn't know for, like, two of these bands is that four years later is that they were actually, like, a real thing. Because, yeah. like, yeah. for me, it was, like, when I, like, I didn't even see their work, like, outside of Cartoon Network. But it wasn't even anything of, like, well, I guess they're not popping if I don't see them. More. But, no, it's just, like, I just didn't know until, like, four years later. And that's pretty much how I found YouTube in that same case and form. My favorite groups is... uh Meanie Money, that's like my favorite group of all time from Hello Project. Uh, so I've noticed that. Um, so now we're going to get into the thing that's called first and favorite. I've sure. noticed that your title name of your user is called Noel Comics. Yep. And so what was your first comic and your favorite comic? I'm going to start off a little first with. Uh, my first manga for school, my first one was, like, Naruto, and, like, in school, like, we would have to, like, read these scholastic books and, like, train ourselves, like, on the computer so we can get the book grades, and, like, mm -hmm. my favorite manga, though, is, like, from Azuma Gadayo and uh, Pop Team Mepic. So, what nice. was your uh, first, first comic and manga and favorite comic and manga? Oh, also, I almost forgot... Uh, the only comic I could see myself familiar with was like Spider Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, all right. So, American comic books. My favorite, and this is this kind of goes to 
I think you were kind of hinting at, like, what was my first video that kind of, like, blew up. Right. And, I mean, like, we're talking, like, blow up by, like, lower tier YouTube standards, right? I, I you know, we're still climbing the ladder. I personally, I enjoy being, like, the cable access TV guy, you know? Mm. Um, so, uh, X-Men, uh, like, 90s X-Men was absolutely my favorite um, uh, comic book, American comic book. And so... When I found YouTube, right. uh, one of the first videos I saw was the Japanese TV Tokyo opening to the Fox Saturday morning uh, X-Men. Yeah, they um, had so their own version of it. They did. It was so much better, dude. Like, I mean, I love Jim Lee and Rob Leefield. Um, like, those nine, like, Rob, uh, Mark Silvestri, like, those 90s comic book artists that have kind of an Asian flair but are, like, very kind of pop art, gestural drawing, figure drawing, dynamic stuff. Um, you know, a uh, pop art, American pop culture style. Um, so, like uh, the Japanese opening uh, to X Men uh, from Fox really captured that incredibly well and animated it. And they did it with this band called Ambiance, and. I was just completely blown away by it. I, I, this probably was still my favorite YouTube video to this day. Mm. So I went out and I, I tracked down the, the single and I uploaded the MP3 to YouTube and did some artwork to it. And mm. that's my highest video. I think that's at like 160 K or something Yay. like that, you know? Um, yeah, all right, there you go. There you go. Um, hooray. And I, yeah, so I, I freaking love X-Men, uh, 90s X-Men. Wolverine is my favorite superhero. Um, like sexy girls with like, you know, kind of big hair, high cut stuff, you know, voluptuous kind of cool guys with stubble and, you know, everyone looks like Don Johnson crossed with Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, just like, <laughs> like the best, you know. So that's absolutely I love that style of American comic books. Um, and then my introduction to um, anime and manga really came, I guess, Fatal Fury, the motion picture I caught on the Sci-Fi channel in 1998, I think. Mm. And it was like the style. I mean, I remember seeing like Voltron and Akira when I was younger. And I'm like, oh, that's like really interesting and cool, but it moves a little slow for me. But I saw Fatal Fury, and I had that AIC mm. house style where it was like, again, like sexy girls, cool guys. Everything was like soaked in sunlight and exaggerated stylistic proportions. And I was like, what the hell is this? Is it, like, <laughs> it, looks, it looks sloppy, but it's masterful at the same time. And I just mm. – I, I, that really struck me. And then I and then I remember I was waiting for a pizza one day. I still what the anime bug still hadn't totally attached itself to my brain. Right. And my friend was really into Dragon Ball Z, and he's like, "Oh, Dragon Ball Z is so good." I'm like, "Okay, yeah, whatever." You know. Um, I was waiting for a pizza one day, and I just happened to click on the Dragon Ball Z that was uh, Piccolo fighting Frieza's second form, and I was like, "Holy shit, this is like really, really good." <laughs> and I was like completely hooked after that. I got into Gundam Wing. I got into Tenshi Muyo, I got into Outlaw Star, Cowboy Bebop, and you know, just and then International Channel with Armor Trooper Boat, Tom's Irresponsible Captain Tyler, Shinesman, and all that stuff, you know. And um, so, and then I got really into um, the uh, American release of Shonen Jump. I had a subscription mm. for a long time, so I was reading Dragon Ball, uh, One Piece, uh, Shaman King, um, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho. Uh, I got really into uh, a comic book manga called Video Girl Eye. Okay. Uh, that was a really good one. Rurouni Kenshin. Samurai um, Eggs. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Uh, I also um, was into um, some girl manga. I had um, a subscription to An America Extra. Oh. And so there was a, yep. Uh, Banana Fish was another Banana one Fish. I really liked. Uh, uh, Gacked, Gacked uh, you know, the vampire pop star, you know. That was his favorite manga. And mm. um, I got really into uh, Yoon Koga's artwork. She did Earthian. Uh, okay. Um, and she also did the artwork to um, Gundam Double O. Um, so she, I really liked her artwork. I mean, Earthian was like a lot of like girly fan service stuff, which I wasn't kind of into. But it was like I loved the artwork and the early part of the story. So uh, that was another international channel. Um 
uh, anime that I like. So yeah, those are some of the titles that really, uh, for anime and manga, that really stuck early on with me. So now I can see how they call you Noel Com. You know what uh, Noel stands for, right? Yeah, I, well, I'm born right before Christmas, actually. <laughs> I'm, I'm wow. born on uh, December 18th, so I'm born a week before Christmas. Gotcha. Um, the channel I'm called is, like, Edo4, and it's, like, uh -huh. I'm called this because, like, I'm, like, the fourth of Eddie's, and also, like, um, it was, like, two reasons I actually, I, like, first one was just, like, the main reason, and the second mm -hmm. one, I'm, like, I'm built for this. The first one, it was, you know the show, uh, Edda and Eddie? Yeah, of course. So there was one episode where they had to play, uh, Kings and Queens with, uh, Ed's younger sister, Sarah, and Jimmy. And uh, one part, Eddie had a puppet that was called yeah. Edo. And that's how I got that information. And, uh, very um, cool, very cool. The second part was, uh, do you, have you seen a video? It's like, real, it's like, it's been popular and like a lot of like people from Japan and everywhere are viewing it too, called The History of Japan. I don't think so. All right. So there was one part where they were sharing like how... The, how Tokyo got its name, and the first name it was was Edo, and it's just yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. and yeah. that's actually how. Wow, that makes sense. And so that makes sense. From that note, like my very first uh, anime yeah. that I um that I got that I remember when I was like five years old on Cartoon Network was uh, Hamtaro. That was yeah, like my yeah, very. Hamtaro was cute. <laughs> it was like the way I like describe it with people. It's like. The hamster version of Rugrats. That's the way yeah, I always... Yeah. Um, so, wow. So that was, a, that was a cute anime. I remember Hamtaro, and I like the artwork on that. And one other, like, fun fact is, like, have you actually... Have you, you? Did you know they had movies? I'm not surprised, but I did not know. I, I did not... They, I wasn't, like, into Hamtaro that much, but I always thought it looked cool. Yeah, they had, awesome they had movies. They had movies. It's like, we didn't get them, but, like, the big thing I remember from that, and it's, like, 20 years since they did the first one. They had, like, mm -hmm. two other ones. One of the guest stars that was in the movie that I did a video report on was, like, Meanie Money was in the movie. I was just like, oh, my God, they're in, and they're, they themselves are hamsters. I'm like, oh, my God. So That is awesome. Sp speaking of Japanese group, oh, yeah. So when I really got into it, it was like 2009, and then from that point forward, I just went full on in to this day. So on that yep. note, it leads us to our next question, which is, what is your first Japanese group and artist and favorite ones of all time? Awesome, man. That's a great question. TM Revolution. All right. You, oh. talked, about, you talked about Puffy, right? So yeah, Puffy, you know you're married yeah, to one of the girls in Puffy, and then she got a divorce. Huh. It was yeah. That I think and was, uh, uh, there, there was I, I remember there was another Glay. Glay was also married Glay, to I love Glay. It was one of the members. Winter they were, again is a fantastic song by Glay. I listen mm. to every every winter. I listen to that song. It's like it's a such a cool video too. It used to be the closing credits to Hey 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 Music Champ. Mm -hmm. um, and, I love yeah Glay. Oh great. man, and also like when they uh, I think like from the late nineties when they did the open like I love that you like shared the opening to. Uh, him speaking English with Tomi Shinohara, which she's another uh, video I'm going to get to soon, Tomi Shinohara. That's awesome. And um, uh, for, yeah, I think like TM Revolution, I remember when I saw that, I was I, I was like, oh my, not only you found the open, you found the makings. I'm like, oh yeah, my that was God. That such, I, I, I lost my shit in, in a good way when I found that. Um, so I, <laughs> Dude, let me tell you what I used to do, okay? Because mm. I, for the longest time, had dial-up internet. Like, I had dial-up AOL? Internet well, yeah, no, I, not even. AOL oh. was a rip-off. I had, like, a oh. local place called Odyssey, right? <laughs> Odyssey? Uh, mm. Yeah, Odyssey Networks. That was what I had. I had that through dial-up. They had better prices than AOL. Okay? Oh, all so right. I had such slow internet with YouTube. I used to go to my friend's house um, and bring a VHS tapes. And he'd, I'd hook his computer up to a VCR and tape stuff off YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so I, that's how I have some of my stuff is that I just taped it off of YouTube. And I found that TM Revolution clip and, like, jumped on it. Because my first exposure to TM Revolution was on Hey, Hey, Hey. He did the song called Boarding. 
Mm. And um, it was just awesome. And then I heard his Veroni Kenshin stuff. And yeah, it was uh, Daisuke Asakura. I'm big into like keyboard um, synth pop. And he, yeah, absolutely. So uh, Daisuke Asakura was Team Revolution's producer. Mm. Um, and uh, so I, I love Daisuke Asakura stuff. I actually just up- uploaded a band he used to produce called Run and Gun. Their okay. Hey, 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 performance. performance. He, uh, oh my, Run and Gun, he produced them? Early in the day, early days. He 20 years ago, Gun. right? When they. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When they, when they first started, I have their first Hey, Hey, Hey performance. On yeah, my channel, I, yeah. And, and he produced them. Um, another one, he, he produced a girl. Um, she did Summer Rain, Yuki Kimura. Okay. Um, I also really liked a lot. Uh, TM Network is another group I love. Yeah. Um, that was, you know, how Tetsuya Komuro got his start. Yeah, for um, Avix, yeah. I love TM Network. Um, you know, City Hunter, Get Wild, they did they did Beyond the Time from Char's Counterattack. Uh, just they have been just awesome 80s uh, synth pop. Um, mm, Self yeah. Control is another oh good song gosh. from them. What was the first and favorite Korean artist of all time? Uh, I would say that would be H.O.T. Mm. Um, so, oh, man, one of my <laughs> one of my favorite shows to watch on International Channel was a show called Revolution, mm. um, and they showed H.O.T.'s "We Are the Future," yes. and I was like, "This is like so freaking cool." <laughs> And uh, then they show they they had like a whole H.O.T. episode one time, and like. I was, yeah, they had, like, uh, candy and, I think, like, everything. It's like, yeah, it's fantastic. From so the I beginning love, to, I like, the H-O-T. end? The beginning to, the, like, the end of their music video? Yeah, dude, I think the last one they showed, and I have this video on the channel, it was, like, a The legend, video. The, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, The Promise of H.O.T. Yes! Oh, it was, my. like, it was really pretty, but it was, like, Korean videos are sometimes from that early 2000s period, like unnecessarily depressing. Oh and my like, God! Some girl in the future, like, died in a gutter, and then, like, the HOT angels, angels. Like, took her to heaven and gave her a concert. Like, that mm, was the video, wow. basically. Uh, man, the craziest thing about it's funny, like, you mentioned HOT. They were pretty, like, the group before that was Soteji and Boys. They mm-hmm. were pretty much the BTS of right now. And the thing uh-huh. that was actually so funny, I remember, was like one of the hosts was saying, like, guys, can you please stop requesting it? Oh, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. I remember the music video heaven. Okay. Yes. They, they yes. used to have this, like, these, like, uh, little, like, asides to do the music videos. They'd have the girls do the music videos. And then they had. This kind of like he looked kind of like half Asian, half English, or whatever. Right. And he was like, he's like pleading with the viewers for in the message boards for some kind of sanity for the HOT fan base. And I, I thought, I thought the other group was God, but apparently it was like another one. He's like, but well, please, we're all friends here. We can like both groups. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. that was great. But the I, I, I remember that vividly. Hmm. For me, my uh, first group, it's funny because it's in the same category as this. My first group was uh, SES, and the song, oh, it was SES. like 10 years after I was born, which is the first I'm Your Girl. Interesting enough, years later, I was talking to the dude who not only directed that video, but so many more, like HOT, one time, everybody. This dude directed everybody, and edit everybody, too. It's the company in him is called Hong's Pictures, and I'll definitely share a link with that to you as well. You are awesome, man. That is fantastic. You are, you are, it is so cool. My favorite one is uh, Boa. Boa is like my all time. Like and uh, before I get more into Boa, uh, my favorite SES song, it was a song called Nonsense. The okay. thing was, it's like that I'm Your Girl song. Uh, the rappers in it was Andy and Eric from the group Shimwa. And uh, and the way that they were rapping in nonsense, it sounded like the Korean version of Ed and Eddie. What is uh, your favorite food? My favorite food would be uh, angel hair pasta with uh, meatballs. Um, that, so I, um, I live, uh, again, in Cortland, and there's a great... Italian American restaurant called the Green Arch, and 
Uh, they have great angel hair and meatballs, so that's my favorite. Oh, or my my wife makes great food too. That's uh, my wife uh, makes uh, very very good shrimp dishes, so that's also good. She just popped it. <laughs> like, what about my food? Um, she's a, she's a master with shrimp in a frying pan. Gotcha. That man, that's that's gonna sound delicious. Like if I come to New York one day and just like visit your house and oh, stuff. Yeah. No, I'll hook you up, man. So. Um, I would say mine is, like, pizza and just, like, any other stuff. It's funny because I remember, like, at first, I didn't really like vegetables. But when they were, like, mixed into, like, Asian dish or, like, any type of meats and stuff, I mm -hmm. wouldn't even know it was there. And it was just be like, this is actually some delicious corn meat. What did you do? <laughs> but, uh, like, corn, like, almost like, like, uh, like, uh, what is it? Cornbread and stuff. Yeah. But it's like, um... Dude, my wife just made some really good cornbread. Like, no joke. <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> it's uh, funny that she just popped in here because she made a really good plate of cornbread the other day. So. Mm. Uh, is there any, uh, like, people you would like to collaborate with on your YouTube? And especially, like, outside of YouTube, like, anybody? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I love that I'm chatting with you, man. So that's awesome. So I'm always down for... For any other interviews or collabs you want to do, no. um, my favorite YouTube channels. Um, I really like uh, this guy in Japan called Guy Jillionaire. Mm. Um, he does a lot of really good videos on just the uh, '90s and '80s obscure Japanese video games and pop culture stuff. So he's really good, Guy Jillionaire. Uh, Kenny Lauderdale. Oh is, my I god! Mean, yeah, I that dude's amazing. Kenny Lauderdale. I, okay, so like I, you know, you remember, you remember the TV show Home Improvement? Like, yeah, had, of like, course. Tim Allen. Okay, it was on so, Nick at Night right. from my time. I consider myself Tim Allen and Kenny Waterdale, Bob Vila. You know, like, I mean, like, <laughs> Bob Vila was, was like the big one with the net, like the big stage, and then like like uh, Tim Allen had like the little Tool Time show. So Kenny Waterdale was the Bob Vila to my Tool Time. I I got mad respect for Kenny Waterdale. Uh, I think it'd be awesome if I could just get to, you know, I don't know. Uh, I would say, like, my favorite video from him was when he was in a, uh, doing the video history about Mickey Momo, and yeah. especially, like, the show that, um, was it, I'm trying, I don't think it was, ki it was Kill a Kill, Kill a Kill, like, when yeah. she, he was just going over, like, the Sailor Scouts. He, I was just like, this exists in the 80s. Yeah, the, the like the girls are just super. It's like I got this yo-yo. I'm like, oh god, I and the coin. That. I'm like, not the coin. Yeah, I you know, another show, another video of his that I love is the Pony Metal You Guy one mm. um, with um, Creamy Mommy. Mm. So it, he goes into a, like a deep dive of the like mech fan service dojinshi of uh, Creamy Mommy. I really like that, and dude. When COVID hit, I was doing a um, contest for the uh, Shonen Jump. Um, they were did an international contest. Interesting. So I was working on an entry, and actually, it's on my channel. It's called Blood of the Best. If you want to check it out, if you got some time to kill. Definitely. Uh, I mean, you don't have to, but what I but like I but I watched so much on a loop of Kenny Lauderdale going off on Charge Man Ken when I was making that. I just was like dying laughing for like. <laughs> Four days straight. That's like one of the best videos. And I like Char. Like, I mean, I never heard of Charge Man Ken before that. I kind of like get the vibe that they either unintentionally or intentionally hit. But I like that shit crazy stuff. And I really enjoyed seeing Kenny Lauderdale have a nervous breakdown over Charge Man Ken. It was that, fantastic. I, yeah. I definitely will check that out. Um, yeah. Uh, so, wow. Um, so. As far as, like, YouTubing and, like, live streaming, it's, like, is there any other things that you're doing, like, on the side and stuff? Well, my main job is actually as a seventh-grade social studies teacher. Um, the oh, YouTube man. Stuff, <laughs> How, the YouTube do do, do, do they know about your – does that school know about your YouTube channel at all? Yeah, actually, one of the kids, like, mentioned it in, in the yearbook. It was, like, uh, my favorite like, – they're, like, what's your favorite YouTube channel? And they're, like – like Noel Comics, because Mr. Passery runs it. <laughs> like, that is. Sometimes kids 
Because I'll find it, and they'll be like, well, I found your YouTube channel. It's like, yeah, I know. It's, like, really good. Like, I got no shame in my YouTube of channel. Of course, so. man. Of course. Um, but, uh, yeah, not a, I mean, like, I mean, I do try to keep them separate. Like, I, you know, if a kid stops by one of my live streams or something, that's fine because it's public. You know, right. I obviously won't be friends with anyone, like, on a social, private social media or anything like that. But I just right. think that YouTube is, like, this is my this is my little cable access channel. And if I'm doing a live call-in show or something like that in the form of a live stream and someone wants to stop by and say hi, you know, I just, I try to keep it, um, you know, expressive of my personality, but positive and appropriate. So I haven't run into any trouble with anything like that. But right. uh, yeah, my main, what I do is I teach social studies and then what I do to relax is YouTube and um, manga and fan art. So uh, for me, like right now I'm in, a school in Florida, like a college called Full Cell. And cool. uh, like, I'm in right now, I'm in recording arts. And like, I was fin like, this will be like a song I'll redo for sure, especially because like, I would like to be a musical artist. And That's my musical happened. artist name is called Fast Ed. And the nice. song I finished, but the, like I said, this will be like worked on more, even though it's like it's already out there and stuff, it's called Spending the Night on Earth. And like nice. last year, I just graduated from uh, from film, and I've been in like nice. Florida for uh, for about three years. So also on that note, the, 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 uh, it's not on the same note, but different note. So the video I did last time about Flame. So there. Uh, oh wait, have you heard of that group Flame? I don't think so. Another video. Okay. I'll so, check it out. so their first music video, it was translated as the spirited woodpecker um okay. they filmed their first video in new york and um i i was also mentioning on that video that uh speed's uh third single go go heaven it was filmed in new york city as well and on that mm -hmm. note i would want to ask you it's like have you ever seen like other people from like different countries like film like music videos from where you live or something like that no, I wish, man. That'd be awesome. Uh, the closest I can, so I went to SUNY Binghamton for school. Um, and I remember I was leaving a class, and the dance club was in the hallway dancing to Morning Masume's Love Revolution 21. And I was like, holy shit, what is going on? <laughs> First of all, you know that song, number one, which shocked me. So I thought I was like the only person in that building that even knew right. what Morning Masume was. And uh, then they were just, like, dancing to it in the hall with, like, all their dance club choreographies. I was like, that is fantastic, you know. <laughs> um, but I, that is the closest I've come to seeing any kind of cool J-pop happening in my home turf. Mm. And it was interesting also when uh, they were there for the 1999 MTV Awards that they they won the international award. I and they were in New, And they were in New York. I'm like... Was it shown on, uh, uh, do you remember it on the original? I don't rem okay, so I don't remember that. I remember seeing that on YouTube. Yeah. Um, and But I don't remember, um, I don't remember seeing that live. My favorite, so I live in upstate New York, which is about five hours north of the city. Um, so um, I, I, I have been to the city. Um, I obviously don't spend a lot of time there. Um, my favorite J-pop stuff that I or, or Asian culture stuff that I think of when I think of New York City is B's Easy Come Easy Go video. Mm. I don't know if you've ever seen that. I okay. love they, that and they song. were in New York. Yep, I love that song. So the whole thing is, um, and Abakoshi is like this dancer in New York, and there's this like really pretty black girl who's like dancing. Oh my god, yeah, like, yeah I know what you're talking paths. about now. Yeah. And they cross paths and they like dance together. Yes. Like, oh my god, I like, love that video. Like, yeah. And he's like kind of wearing cool, like early nineties cool guy clothes. <laughs> and like it's like absolutely like one of my all time favorite songs and videos. And I had that on my channel. I don't know if it got taken down or not. Oh or blocked, but um but I, I actually, when I would teach my kids about immigration, I would teach them about other countries' perceptions of the United States. Right, And I would yeah. show that video as a very romantic view of the United States and the ideal of New York City and stuff like that. I love that song. I love the visuals of that song. I love everything about that song. 
and New York City's awesome in that song. And then another one is Zards Don't You See from Dragon Ball GT. Oh my god! City. I love that video. Well, I, I was literally video. just, I didn't know if you were about to get to or not, but I was like, I was exactly just thinking about Zard. And I always think about it a lot, especially like uh, Speed again, their first music video, uh, Body and Soul, they were in California. I'm like, how do you guys get the money for that? Since Halloween is coming up, uh, do you know what type of costumes like you dressed up as over time? Or that yes, you can remember? I, <laughs> I mean, I have my my earliest memories uh, are being like Voltron for Halloween, but my son is actually uh, going to be Bowser Jr. for Halloween, and I'm going to be Bowser. That's going to be our current. That's going uh, to be our combo this Halloween. And, uh, you know, and then we did a Mario and Luigi, me and my son, a couple of years ago, which was a lot of fun. Dope. And yeah, yeah, like there was a Mario and Luigi <laughs> Halloween. Yeah, we were Mario and Luigi for Halloween. And then uh, I... My, yeah, yeah, it was way cool. I just wanted to be... Um, Mario. Yeah, he was he was a good Mario. And then I, I mean, I remember my mom used to make me these cool costumes. Like, she made me like Wolverine one year. Oh, and, uh, yeah, she, so, made, yeah, and then, like, she made she made the costumes. Yeah, yeah, she made like a Wolverine and an Archangel. So it's good stuff. Yo, it's funny that you say that because like uh, I I did a little bit from like I think like from eight to eleven. Eight to eleven, mm -hmm. I was Spider Man, and like the last one, I was. Uh, I was, it's pretty much, I was Venom, but it's like, yeah, we all cool. said the Black Spider-Man. And yeah, yeah. also, um, my last one I did, I believe, two years ago, I was like, it was like this zombie uh, stormtrooper <laughs> type of thing, and it glows in the dark. So, nice. it's when you say, like, uh, your mom made your, one of the costumes, my very first, and I mean my very first Halloween costume, was Yugi from Yu-Gi-Oh!, and my nice, mom man. made like the jacket and stuff, and definitely I'm a when I'm editing this, I'm a like like have like a screen where it shows like like my mom made the jacket, I, not the pants, but it's like the jacket. And I think it was I think it was the jacket, and it was like I was Yugi. I was like, oh my god, my mom's paying attention to this, especially That's um so cool, man. four years later, morning musume. Uh, I was watching the commercials for Pocky, and then one day. My parents bought me that, and I was like, yo, this, this is not from Walmart. And it was, and I was like, oh, my good God. Uh, that is so awesome. So um, one thing, and I think I'm a, basically like one, I like post this on other social medias. This is going to be like a questionnaire thing for like myself. It, besides like one of the other things being of like I'm going to do another Q&A video. I believe that would be my third or fourth one I've done. Mm -hmm. it's probably not going to be on this, but it's like, it's one of the things I'm going to ask for like, while, you know, sharing this video, which is, um, so I am from Louisiana and I was born in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. If, if I wasn't from those areas, where do you think I was, would, would have been from? I, my, the, the stuff I got was, uh, two of my friends said that I was from Philadelphia and another friend said that I was from here. Okay, so I have a friend that I've met through YouTube that you kind of have a similar vibe to, and I mean this in a good way. Of course. And he's from Compton. Uh, California? So I, would say, I would say California. I'd, I'd say I would guess West Coast just because you remind me of my friend True Sinister. Uh, who, I think I've heard of that person. Of but definitely, it is actually interesting you say that because uh, my little sister, she's not from that area, but from California. She was born in California, and my mom, she grew up in California. It was, uh -huh. it, they call it Silicon Valley, but it used to have been called East Palo Alto. And um, also, uh, she was born in uh, Texas. Uh, Jesus, I forgot the place. I forgot the place of Texas. What was it? What what? But it was Texas. It was Texas. And my father, born and raised in Louisiana. And one of the last questions I have is, uh, any last words of like, of encouragement for like other people? And how do you like people to remember you by? Just at any time. So, 
so we're, I mean, words of encouragement. Um, you know, uh, I'm a Sunday school teacher, so I always tell my uh, students that I teach in Sunday school uh, to love God with all your heart and treat people the way that you'd want to be treated, right? Those are the two great commandments. And I think if you do those things, then everything will kind of fall in perspective for you. Your life won't be perfect, but you'll be a better person and stuff will, I think, you'll, stuff will, you'll view it uh, through a kinder lens. Uh, and, and so I think that that would be some advice I would give. And in terms of how would I like to be remembered, um, that's a really uh, good question because I I don't know I just I, I just kind of plug along and pursue my interests so I don't really think of a legacy so much but um, I would like to be remembered as someone who was a good representative of my beliefs um, I would like to be someone who's remembered uh, as someone who cared about his family and I'd like to be remembered uh, as someone who uh, had some interesting talents that people like to look at so uh, I guess that would be my uh, my three things I like to be remembered for. So, all right, man. Thanks for uh, again tuning into this and doing this for me. It, it's been a great interview, and I'll see you around. Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed this interview today and everything that we have shared. And as usual, follow me on my usual in my ah, follow me on my usual Twitter of at Lego, Instagram of at he at E. Hughes IV and my Facebook at O. Hughes 4. And coming up at this time is the next episode of uh, the next report of Ya 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 for my first channel. And as usual, until next time, guys, see you later. Goodbye. Talking.